Hello, it is Friday, February 9th, 2024. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday crossword, which means we're going to be solving the first of two themeless puzzles for the week. And it uh, could be some misdirection, some punniness, some, some difficulty. We'll find out. And this potentially punning, misdirecting, difficult edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Casey Brandt, Michael, Aaron Spiller, and as always, the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the four of them. They're benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and that means they support this channel. They keep it going day in, day out with their direct contributions. I really do appreciate that. And if you'd like to join the channel and support it, keep it going in that way, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. Uh, that'll take you to all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as for benefactors, the Let's Check the Crosses official mug. And uh, I'm due because it's Friday, another edition of the weekly mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. So look forward to that in the next day or so. And uh, thanks again to everybody who backs the campaign at any level. Uh, thanks also if you like the channel, if you subscribe, well, if you like the videos, if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, if you comment on the videos, all of those things are helpful and appreciated. So thanks for that. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join via another link in the description field. And that's a nice, friendly chat community uh, that is free to join. And I commend it to you. All right. So there we go. That is... Now it's time to solve the crossword itself. This is a Friday themeless puzzle by Christina Iverson, who's constructed, I think, around two dozen puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And uh, let's see what's in store. Let's start solving. Beaming. Beaming could be it could be figurative. It could mean happy and, you know, visibly happy. Or it could be the sun is beaming, maybe shining in some way. Not sure. Sounds of melodramas. Well, if it were sound singular, I would think something like, alas, you know, sort of exaggerated sound of sadness or regret. Very melodramatic, but I'm not sure what it is. In three letters, pluralized. Let's see, this could be an S. Passes with ease. Skates by or... Um, maybe this isn't ending with an S. Maybe this is two words. Sounds with melodrama. Because passes with ease, I'm thinking of something like aces it or it's, it's not long enough but you know, I don't know we'll keep going wind up alone or wind up alone maybe but I'm not really sure what that would mean there is a question mark so it is a pun so there could be it could be some wind up alone in some sort of punny way I don't really know what that would be wind up alone what would be a thing that would be wind related that would be you'd only do alone at the top of a mountain or something i have no idea sorry uh mid-east capital i mean there are probably probably a number of possibilities here dubai um robot sana uh what about this socket? A, a lolly, like a lollipop. When you have the um, exclamation point, it usually means you're saying something about the answer rather than defining it or substituting, serving as a substitute a synonym for it. Um, yeah, boy, I'm just not getting anything yet, am I? Fuzzy exotic pet. Fuzzy exotic pet. Performed by the whole ensemble in music. Uh, Atuti? Maybe we don't put the A in. Maybe we just put Tuti. Maybe it's not even... Maybe the A. Maybe I'm just making up the A. Maybe it just says Tuti. Uh, does that help with this? Not really. Like some teenagers and pasta. Al dente. <laughs> it's not going to be the answer. Like some teenage... What could you use to describe... Oh, saucy, saucy. There we go. Teenagers are often saucy. They're kind of, you know, they they uh, might not respond to things in the most cooperative way. Um, and pasta is often sauced. Okay, so sounds of melodrama. A sigh, singular, would be a, it's definitely associated with melodrama, but that would only be a single sound. At stake. In the... I don't know, at the... Uh, 
I like I like the being in the middle, in the something, at the something, of the something. That kind of idea. Hens, but not roosters. Layers. The hens lay eggs, but roosters don't, of course. Okay. Um, overwhelming and needing time for cons overwhelming and needing time for consideration. It's something that is just completely defeating you or it's or or it's an enormous weight on your mind it's i don't know it's a long word or a phrase i suppose it could be passes with ease flies flies by something like that nails it Nails it would that would be my along my initial idea, sort of aces it, but it would actually fit. Let's see if that gives me anything. Sounds of melodrama. Oh, right. Okay, that would actually put not an S at the end of this, which is not what I expected. Sounds of melodrama. So maybe that's wrong. Sails by, maybe? passes with e yeah okay i was thinking of it i was thinking of a, you know a test or an exam but if you sail by someone you know in a vehicle you could pass them with ease that would make that would actually fit so sounds of melodrama oh sobs sobs a sobbing over dramatic sobbing would be melodramatic okay there we go so dc comics weapons one of which can be seen at the smithsonian's oh bat this will be from i bet this is from the excellent 1960s batman series which i must recommend to you um contractually apparently in this series uh but batarangs probably uh batman's bat-shaped boomerangs oh this is sana okay that was one of my guesses okay well good there's a mid-east capital and then at stake is okay and it's on the something it's on the it's at stake it's on the I like on the as a as an opener, but I didn't necessarily have any specific ideas about what it would lead to. What about this? What if where a flask might be kept? Where a flask might be kept on on your tab at a bar? I don't, know, I don't really think so. You wouldn't be served in a flask at, at a bar. Um, oh, lab, a laboratory, that kind of flask, not not of not from which you would drink, but in which you would put you know, reagents or whatever. Okay, so, oh, if something's at stake, it's on the line. Yes, okay, you're putting your reputation on the line. You're putting it at stake. There we go. Okay, like the Lilliputians, right? This is from Gulliver's, uh, Gulliver, uh, Gulliver's Travels. Um, they're the uh, tiny, tiny creatures um, who, uh, over whom Gulliver, uh, boy, I'm struggling with that word today. I don't remember that ever being a problem for me, uh, over whom Gulliver um, towers. Okay. One of the Jackson brothers from the Jackson 5, Tito Jackson. Am I remembering his name? Is it Tito or Tino? Tito. Tito Jackson. That sounds right. Hallmate. Uh, question mark. Hall. Oh, Hall and Oates. Right. Okay. That's funny. We have two music acts crossing one another here, or two musicians anyway. Um, I guess these aren't the acts. These are members of the act. Okay, first president to own a car. Um, interesting fact. I guess it was Taft. Um, seems like that's who would fit here and would be plausible time-wise. Um, I certainly didn't happen to know that, but there we go. Frequent conspiracy subject, a UFO, an unidentified flying object. And to be classified in levels would be hierarchical? No. Oh, yeah, that does fit, yeah. Hierarchical, yeah, that's it. That's straightforward. Okay. Uh, oh, suck at a straw from, you know, into a, to a cup. All right. That was straightforward. Just didn't come to mind. Yoga pose with arms extended and legs folded over the head. Crow, uh, crow. I don't, I don't know the yoga poses, unfortunately. I mean, I've heard of some of them, but this doesn't sound familiar. With arms extended and legs folded over that boy, that does not sound like a thing I could achieve. Um, just trying to think if there's if that <laughs> sounds like an animal or something to me, but I can't I can't think. And with a W anyway. 
overwhelming and needing time for consideration. All something, all... All together, all... No, never mind. That doesn't make any sense. That's not going to go there. Okay, well... Um, court ruling. Court ruling question mark. So it could be, what if it's not a law court? It could be some other, oh, it could be a tennis court, a let. You could rule a shot, a let, and then, and then it's done over, I think is how that works. This could be a lot, a lot to, I'm just going to type it in to see if it makes it look any more evocative to me. A lot to unpack. Oh, there's a lot to unpack here, people often say. There we go. That's overwhelming and needing time for consideration. Someone says something to you, it you know, takes you aback and you say, well, it's, it's a lot to unpack. It's overwhelming and needing time for consideration. You might reply, naturally. Okay, good words, so to speak. Good words, so to speak. Good words. Don't know. Natural necklace, a lei, a flower garland, associated with Hawaii, for instance. Okay, yoga pose, right, is it flow or plow or slow? It's not going to be slow, I don't think. Um, glow. Plow is the only one of those that's an actual noun. I mean, I guess if you if you folded your legs over your head and you extended your arms, I guess you could sort of look like a plow. Are your, are, your, are your arms the sort of handles that someone would then grab to push the plow? Is that what's implied there, maybe? Could be. What about the downs? Good words, so to speak. Please? As in, in a court? I don't know. I don't know why that would be the case. Good words, so to speak. Good words. I don't know. I can't quite see what that is. Sorry. Boy, this puzzle is tricky for me today. O on a letter would be a hug, as in X's and O's are hugs and kisses. Okay, so what what would this be then? Good words. Oh, plugs is if you plug somebody's put in. Oh, oh, right. Okay, so if someone said put in a good word for my book that I wrote, they, you know, you could say put it put in a plug for it. I think that I think that works. I'm going to try it and see if it if it holds. Oh, this looks like quitting or something. Tre oh, it is a uh, trend for unengaged employees. Qu uh, quiet quitting. This is the phenomenon of sort of doing the, you know, doing the sort of minimum at, at, at your job. Um, I think is, I think is basically what this refers to. Um, all right. Blank pasa, que pasa. Um, you know, how's it going? Okay. Stephen Sondheim's the worst blank in London. The wor worst. I actually don't know. I don't really know musical theater very well, I have to be honest. Um, so I'm not very familiar with Stephen Sondheim. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, I'll be curious to see. It's a blast. A gale, maybe? A bla you know, sort of wind? Let's try that. Signed by a highway exit. Gas, maybe? It's, I don't know that I remember seeing signs that literally say gas on them, but it would be something you'd want to be alerted to, I suppose. So maybe it is. Uh, Blank and the Good Book, 1958 jazz album. I wonder, this must, this is probably the name of a jazz musician. Louis, Louis Armstrong, maybe? 1958. Would that still be reasonable? Yeah, probably. What about beaming? Something glow? I don't really have anything else that I think would go in there just yet, but I just want to see if I can chain things together and make some useful crosses. No, it isn't. <laughs> I can immediately see it's not. Because monthly with a palindromic name, if it's palindromic, it must start with an E because it ends with an E. So probably L Magazine, that's a monthly publication. And then fly, to fly is to soar. Okay, so what is this? Beaming. All smiles. There we go. If someone is described as being all smiles, they can be said to be beaming, visibly happy. Question of legitimacy. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Right. That's funny. That's a funny way to, to characterize this. 
Um, it's certainly a, a modern, I would say within the last like 20, 30 years, maybe. Is that a thing? And people would say to question its legitimacy. Is that, is that something real? Okay. Wind up alone. To wind up alone. Oh, it is something solo. I don't... Does wind up alone help me with the solo? Is it a wind... In, is it a solo on a wind instrument? Flute solo, maybe? Caption in a comparison ad. After, before and after shots. There we go. Oh, that would have been a really easy one to do earlier because before is... It's too long to fit. Mid blank. Spanish for my name is. Uh, Milan. Oh, how do I not remember this immediately? Miyamo. Word with tie or fly. Tie rod, fly rod. Those are both. Those are both things. Is that a thing? Yes. Ruler often seen in a robe and a mirror. There we go. As in of an emirate, literally. Fuzzy exotic pet, a tarantula. Yes, boy, that's a thing. I remember growing up knowing people who owned tarantula pets. That's not, I have not encountered that in decades. Um, but but yes, I do remember that being something that people did occasionally. Sensational, something sensational is lurid and, and uh, kind of, um, what, uh, painted in bright colors, you could sort of metaphorically say. So sensationalized or, or sexed up, I guess. This is a flute solo, clearly, at this point. So lead or lead, oh, lead in this case is a star of a film, for instance. And then blank, men explain things to me. Influential 2014 essay collection by Rebecca Solnit. Oh, there we go. Okay. I remember that actually. That that I think was, I mean, it probably was, I don't remember exactly the timeline of this, but I think it probably overlapped with the sort of whole Me Too uh, movement of phenomenon. Okay. Anyway, big container, a vat maybe? And facial concealer is a veil would conceal one's face. High-speed commuter option. So this is the uh, Amtrak's uh, high-speed service, Northeast Corridor, uh, United States, uh, Northeast Corridor of the United States, high-speed service, Acela. Okay, these might help people take deep breaths. These might help people take deep breaths. Aqua something? Aqua, oh, no, I don't know. Aqua lungs, that's, that's something to do with diving or, I don't know. Uh, twist, is that, I, I think that, the, I think that that's a, that's a device, aqua lung. That sounds right to me. Uh, twist. Social media influencer Addison Blank. Wow, I have no clue about that. Stephen Sondheim's The Worst Lies in London? Oh, pies, maybe? Like meat pies or eel pie or something. Those are sort of classic London dishes. Break into bits. English more broadly. Break into bits. To parse, as in a sentence. There we go. Okay. Right, I wonder what the worst pies in London is all about. Anyway. Pops. Could be... Pops. Could be father or grandfather. Oh, oh, old man. Yes, you could refer to your pops, your old man. There we go. That's it. Invention originally used as a yellow dye in brief. I was going to say ant because I don't know, maybe formic acid is used in yellow dye. I don't know. But I don't know that you could describe an ant as an invention. So that made me think it's not, not the answer. Um, TNT? Oh, right. Okay. Is that what the original purpose of TNT was? Yikes. Uh, there we go. All right. Baby bat. Uh, what is a baby bat called? I'm sure this will be familiar when I see it, but I don't know offhand. The Traver Traveling Wilburys or Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Um, those are examples of supergroups, um, famous musicians banding together to make uh, a supergroup. Track selection. It could be track as in track on a record, or it could be Track is in track and field, so a race of some sort. I don't know. I mean, it could just be race, I guess, but I don't, I don't know. Conceited sorts are... Um, I don't know. Grumpy toward... Something at your... Grumpy toward someone. You're 
something at them. Match up a line. Doesn't fit, of course. Um, disdainful sounds are tisk tisk, maybe. No, okay. I this I didn't realize that this we had put an lu in here, so this is going to be aqua lungs. So just oh no, it is it is it is this. What did I? Yeah, okay. I don't know why I thought that was wrong. There we go. That does fit with aqua lungs. Okay, so bacon or pancetta. Those are cure examples of cured pork. There we go. And uh, conceited sorts are oh snobs, I suppose. Gives oh maybe not snots. It's also, you could also describe a conceited person as a snot. So to maybe that's more specific than snob because um, it doesn't necessarily have the specific. You could be conceited for reasons other than class, I guess. Anyway, it gives out, uh, meets out. There we go. And then match up. To match up is to agree. I see as in, as in these, these figures match up, they agree. And then grumpy towards someone Gross at that doesn't sound right at all. Twist a twist is a is a is a a pearl a, a, no a curl. Okay, I was trying to think of I don't know what I was thinking of, but anyway, it's it's curl. And then social media influencer Addison May Ray. Oh, cross at if you're grumpy towards someone, you're cross at them. You're angry. You're upset. Okay, well there we go. That was straightforward. So this is Addison Ray. Okay, I, that was simple. Baby bat, right? I don't know that offhand. Exposure units are RADs, exposure um, to radiation, right? I think that's that's what that's looking for. Lena of Alias. This is a TV show, I believe. I've never seen never seen Alias. I don't. Oh, but I have heard of Lena Olin. Maybe that maybe that's the person to whom this is referring. Let's see. In concert, all as one or all at once or something. We did it in concert. We did it all at once. I'm not sure. There might be other possibilities for this, but I'm just going to try this and see if it works. Southern city that was once home to Black Wall Street, uh, Tulsa, right? The famous um, uh, Tulsa destruction of, of uh, the black neighborhood, of black sort of quarter of, of Tulsa. Okay. It makes a spin around a dance floor. A, a disco, oh, disco ball. There we go. I was trying to think of a disc, something to do with a disc in the sense of, once again, a record, actually, but uh, but no, it isn't that. Okay. One-sided dice. Snake snake eyes is when uh, you roll two dice and they both have a, a one. So the side of the dice with the one is facing upwards, I suppose, is what's, what that means there. A place for a ring, a lobe, as in your earlobe, can have, can have a, a ring. And track selection, still not sure about that one. Philippine island that's home to Iloilo. Um, sorry for my likely butchering of that pronunciation, but I'm not sure offhand. Scrooge to Donald Duck. Uh, uncle Scrooge is within the sort of duck family. Cartoon duck family was the uncle. Some spa treatments are peels. Yeah, that is a thing you can have done at a spa. Um, I've certainly heard of that. Baby, oh, pup, a baby bat, a, a, a pup. I do recognize that. Great. Okay. And then, oh, Pine, Philippine Island, track selection, line. What am I, what am I not saying about this? Tra oh, oh, track as in, as in a, a train line, a railway line, track selection. I think that's right. And this does, the Pine is what I wanted this to be. So that, that that's good. Okay, great. So. No, okay, I've got something wrong. It's got something wrong. Maybe it's this one. Track selection. Lane? As in, go along this track, this lane? I mean, I might as well just try it. I'm right here. Oh, wow, what was that? Okay, so that was a bit of a, a, bit of a, a mess at the end there, but fortunately, I didn't have to run through the entire grid <laughs> and find a mistake elsewhere. All right. Well, that was the Friday puzzle. I found that very tricky, I have to admit. Um, sort of throughout. There wasn't really a period where I feel I was just flying through the puzzle. I, I had, a, I had to, to work for it every step of the way. Um, and sometimes that's just how it goes, especially on the themeless puzzles. I'll be curious to hear 
how other people found this in terms of difficulty um, relative to a typical Friday. I, I think I found it tougher than a typical Friday, but let me know. Um, and yeah, some, some interesting specific knowledge there. So my, um, I don't know why I thought the Philippine Island was going to have an eye there. Um, there must be some, something in my mind that that was sort of overlapping onto, but it was totally wrong. Uh, and then just, you know, actually we had a few bits of geography throughout this. Um, we had funnily enough, two musicians crossing one another and actually more music related clues because we had Tutti meaning, uh, performed by the whole ensemble in music and we had flute solo. Uh, so that was, that was a sort of micro theme you could argue, um, theme in the broad sense, not a crossword specific mechanical sense. Um, yeah, just interesting things all throughout the puzzle. It was a tough one. I, I thought. Uh, so there we go. That was the Friday crossword. Oh, and actually, you know what? Um, I don't have time to do multiple clues from yesterday's puzzle, although I don't think there actually was much to read in terms of corrections from yesterday's crossword. But what there is, uh, well, there definitely is a big correction, sort of overall correction from both Brian Friedman and Stephen Giblin, um, pointing out that I did indeed miss a major component of yesterday's theme. I was thinking I maybe was, and I think what happened was I didn't properly read and think about the revealer because I, I sort of immediately realized that the answer to the revealer was opposites attract. And so I was, you know, I sort of excitedly filled that in and then didn't think carefully about the rest of it. So, um, as Brian Friedman points out, the revealer opposites attract refers to four pairs of answers. Each of the eight reversal answers has a pair adjacent to it. Each one is next to another separated only by a single black square, and the end of one answer is the opposite of the beginning of the other. So, over, under, in, out, off, on, down, up. Hence, opposites attract. And Stephen Giblin pointed out the same the same thing. Um, opposite words would be next to each other, separated by a black space. So, same same observation. The revealer did specifically refer to pairs of answers. So there had to be some relationship between two answers. And that is what I just didn't really, I mean, I can't remember if I read it aloud, but even if I did, I presumably was already not paying very much attention to it. So um, there we go. Thank you to to those two for, for uh, explaining what I was missing. And that's that for today's video. I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday edition of the New York Times crossword. Uh, it'll be another themeless um, so join me for that. Could be even trickier than this. I hope not too much so. Let's find out. Um, but until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.